Yeah, like Bernard. <laughs> right? We're back, guys, on the Captain's Log. Hope you had a great holiday. This is my first time back uh, in December, and thank you for watching. Cam Bertrand, you are my guest today. <laughs> Thanks for have, uh, coming out, buddy. It's, yeah, it's, you're welcome for me having you. I know. The thing in your is, car. is <laughs> you're not having me. I'm having you. I don't even know why. After 13 years, I decided to screw up my intro. But that's good. This is live, guys. We're always here. And this is the podcast. You can check us out anywhere, guys, that you get your podcast. We're live. It's called The Captain's Log. And uh, my guest, fresh off of his dry bar comedy special, did you get to share it? Uh, or did you panic yeah, when you thing? did when they came up live? I think I did. I mean, hey, don't just, panic now. It's don't a weird panic. thing to share the thing you're doing. It's like, hey, people, wait while well, I share the thing we're Dude, doing. The other day, I was take I took a video on my on Snapchat and I forgot to post it. And then I pulled up my camera again and I went to video something. I was like, and it was playing the video oh, I already yeah. shot. And I was like, what's wrong with this camera? <laughs> <laughs> this camera's messed up. That, that might be the oldest dude thing you've ever done. It's that like, was such, this technology's wrong. such a dad thing, right? My kids are like, dad, you're so so lame oh my god i'm like really i'm probably the coolest dad you've ever met well i'd hope they haven't met a lot of dads yeah well i, I mean i had to tell them that i was the coolest what was i gonna say can't look you know you can't jump out in front of the kids anyway guys we are about to take a ride we're on the captain's log and um the dry bar comedy thing is blowing up for you i love it yeah it's going crazy tell um, me it's cool, man. Like they they released this special like a week ago, and yeah. then they just started putting the clips out. And the clips, for whatever reason, people like them. Like they like me. <laughs> I'm I, always surprised. I, when people it's like funny me. they like you because me, I, I haven't <laughs> still on the up. fence. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, still I still haven't know. warmed up to that yet. I'm getting there. I'm working on it. And I'm like, you, you hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. It's but, like imagine sliding out a girl and be like, "Hey, I'm trying to talk to you, but I don't know how I feel about you yet." She'd be like, "What?" <laughs> You, oh my you, God. you slid in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, camera, I got to tell, talk to the camera guy because the lighting's... Oh, it's better now. He's doing good. Oh, He's the doing, sun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to talk to the sun? <laughs> Listen, this is a high-tech show we do over here. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, where's your boom mic? <laughs> So, uh, so listen, when you shot the special, you were telling me a little behind the scenes uh, info. I know that you were struggling with some alcohol uh, yeah. issues. Tell it's me about it. What's going on? Everybody's going to be like, he's a child. There's no way he's allowed to drink alcohol. You but, look uh, very young, yeah. although you're not. You're clearly uh, um, over the age of 21. 26. Yeah. I uh, turned 26 in Keep February. Keep that baby face, man. I'm trying. There's more facial hair than I ever like grow out. And it's I, just because I'm lazy. And, no, I think yeah. that you're trying to like, you know. Trying to get grown? <laughs> yeah, you're trying to be man now. That's good. <laughs> it's going to take a lot more than facial hair for me to be a man. No, it's, a lot. <laughs> it's the baby skin. It's that damn skin, dude. Would you never get a tan? How'd you live in Tampa and have such good skin? Look, man, hoodie season, all season, okay? Yeah, People yeah. are like, I can't wait for it to get cold to wear hoodies. Nah, man, when you weigh 150 pounds, you, you wear hoodies wear hoodie. all year round. Yeah, that's how you look hood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... So what happened? So you you know this has been an ongoing thing in and out your life, or tell me. Um, I just I don't do drugs, so I got really good at alcohol. Yeah, and I got to a point where I started using it for like to cover up sadness, and I didn't realize it until I was like, oh, self medication, big yeah. thing. Yeah, I know. I have a lot of uh, friends that you know I have to talk to, and I help out and yeah. try that. It's a it's a big thing. It was wild. And then so uh, September 21st, I taped the special. But September 19th, my roommate and I, we had went out. And it was just like a regular night. We were just having fun, turning up. And we ended up doing 15 vodka Red Bulls. That's not a regular night, bro. That's Yeah. For, that, that's, like that, that's, that, it was just a night. And that led a, to that. That's a four year. Yeah. I probably haven't 15 vodka Red Bulls in four years of my life. Yeah, vodka rebels are not a good idea yeah. at all. Like, because combining a, a what they said a depressant with a uh, high energy, they do anyways. But yeah, so I ended up being sick, and then you when made I was a taping, really heartful post. That's the reason why I brought it up. You yeah. posted a nice thing, and you know you're saying, "Look, I'm gonna work on myself." And yeah, because we taped the 21st, and then the 22nd, I had to go to the hospital in Utah. Wow. Because I uh, yeah, I was going through alcohol poisoning and alcohol withdrawals, so. Yeah, afterwards, I made the post, and I was, like, uh, like apologizing for being an idiot, but yeah. also, like, you know, owning my mistakes. You were. But you were. that's what's so crazy is when you watch this special, if I wouldn't, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. No. Like, if I didn't tell you, I was, you, like... you crushed it. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, my body was shutting down. <laughs> my really? body was, like, this is your last shot, man. Yeah. You been, <laughs> These next 40 minutes... Maybe you were, like, on that, uh, what do you call it, flight or fight, and yeah, you're, like, like, I'm going to just crush it. Yeah, they, there's a real thing called stage health. 
like, ask any comedian. If you are, like, sniffling, your throat hurts something, you go on stage, your body, you're fine until you get off stage. As soon as you get off stage, it happens for athletes on the field. I agree. It's a drill. Because I played baseball in college, and you just get all of a sudden, that's just what it is, right? It's the adrenaline rush, where all of a sudden you just, like, don't even realize that and what you're fully focused on everything you're doing. Because comedy is a gladiator sport, man. Like, if you slip up, you're dead. You know, like, not really, but like, just you lose everything. You get, yeah, you'll get eaten alive. Yeah, and right? so, like, if you're not fully focused, like, you're not, your body's not even focused on your nose running. Your body's like, right. man, you better be funny right now. Yeah. You better be funny. Yeah, just let the boogers flow. Yeah. <laughs> just let them flow. Let the jokes keep going. I've only seen one person in the last six years of doing comedy stop in the middle of a set to blow their nose. I've never seen it. I've seen it one time, and it was hilarious. I don't think I've seen it. It was no. like it was like talk amongst yourselves, <laughs> and he blew his <laughs> I nose. I gotta do my little and, thing. And, and yeah, for like a minute, he had to blow his nose, got it all out, and he's like, "And we're back." <laughs> what is That's speaking of move. which? I mean, you're you're twenty. You said twenty six. Uh, in February, so you'll be twenty. Right now. You're twenty five. Yeah. You started comedy when? How old were you? Nineteen. You were nineteen. What made you start comedy? Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Yeah, so killing him softly when I was fourteen, Great. and I was like, "This is this looks like the most fun any bi- any person can yeah. have." So, and you were lucky enough to meet him a few times, eight times. See, I keep count. <laughs> Darnell Rawlings is my boy, and yeah. Darnell's real tight with Chappelle, but he tells me stories how great he is how he takes care of his people. It's just a good thing, and he was really cool to you, dude. He's very nice. Like he, we've met and talked eight times, and he wouldn't be able to pick my name out of. Any names, yeah. but he see my face and he go, oh, I know that guy. Right. Which is a good feeling. Which is a face of mama everyone can love. You know <laughs> it's a goofy face. No, nah, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. Um, yeah, man. He, he's very nice, very humble. Um, I saw one of his sets and we talked afterwards. I was, I told him uh, his Michael Jackson joke is my favorite Michael Jackson joke I've ever heard. He was like, oh... That's high praise, man. It's a lot of good Michael Jackson jokes. And I was like, I know. I was like, Cat Williams got a good one. Chris Tucker's got a good one. And I was like, but that was my favorite comparison I ever heard. And he, he was just so, like, receptive to, like, the insight of why I loved the bit. That's cool. Yeah, I'm such a fan of, like, writing and the way different people do different jokes and, and just styles and stuff. And the way he played that bit, no, I had never seen anybody else do. What about when you meet somebody and you're so excited to meet them and they're total douches? I've had that. I've had that, too. It's the worst, right? Like, why? Yeah, because yeah, there's no reason. Because if Dave Chappelle can be a cool person, there's no reason for anybody <laughs> else on this earth I to be me. I say the same thing. I'm like, dude, yeah. X, Y, I won't name comics, but I'm like, do you know... That I talk to, you know, Kevin Hart and he's cool with me. Like, right. I don't understand why we're having this conflict for nothing. Yeah. The right? guy's like, well, you know, I was on the radio at one time. And you're just like, yeah, but Chappelle, Chappelle. Right. Because yeah. Is the egos are crazy, man. It's a lot of insecurity. And it's a lot of ego. But So happens. what was it like to be on stage the first time? I like to ask the comedians that because there's a lot of... Mm-hmm. Uh, Everyone watches my show. Comedians, agents, whatever, friends. But they're all interested in comedy. So people out there, you know, open micers wanting to start up. What was it like for you on your first uh, experience? I don't... It sounds so corny to be like, I was ready. But, like, I knew I'd wanted to do it for so yeah. long. Did like, you write jokes? Yeah. You- I was writing at 14. You did? And so, like, I... Wow. My first, like, I... It, it, looking back on it, it you're, you're mad at yourself. Wait, you comics- started at 14. My no, I, I, think start he, I started writing. I think he actually has a little interest in comedy. First of all, he yeah. watches every clip. If that's so, how you start. Yeah, and so I think he has some interest more than he actually tells me. Yeah. So how does he? How did you start at fourteen? Like, what was your thing? Just write everything. Like, write what you see, what what you know. Like, you start. I think was trying to make everybody at the lunch table laugh. Like, I would yeah. prepare my whole day to go. I can't wait to get to the lunch table right, to talk the, about the Ms. drop Johnson. these jokes. Yeah. Once I talk, I'm gonna get to the lunch table and be like, you know, Miss Johnson. Was in class today. And she was like, "Come on to the board." And I was like, ah. like, yeah. "Like you just you try to laugh." And you know, a lot of that is that's how you figure out what you do that's funny to other people. Right. Um, so, so let me ask you a question. Do you watch TikTok? Have you gotten into TikTok yet? Not a TikTok guy. Have you tried I it? No, I, I wasn't a Vine guy either. Like, yeah. I don't like, I don't like the trendy thing. If that makes sense. Like the, I get it, and I've seen funny TikToks, but I go, I wouldn't do those. It's, I know some of them. Part these of the game. kids, these kids go nuts over, and I have to watch it thirty times before I understand even why that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It's just a different. I don't. Now I feel like I'm becoming the old guy. Where I'm like, nah, I don't get it. But 
Well, some it's of them, I, I don't get how people get them. Yeah. I don't think they get them. I think they just keep watching them, trying to figure out what they're trying to get. Yeah, if everybody else likes yeah. it, I should like it. But, <laughs> My know. son did one. It's got like 150,000 views. And I still said to him yesterday, I go, dude, I It'd still so, don't get why. So, if, if you were like, I don't know why this is funny. And he just pulls you to the side and he's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know why it's funny either. <laughs> I just did a thing and people laughed. No, and he's like, you know, how do you not get it? It's great. Everybody gets it. I'm like, okay. I go, son, I think they're all waiting to figure out what the hell you're going to do. He's like, but he's like, get no. it. I have a mango. I yeah. threw the mango. And you're like, I, I don't get it. He's like, dead. Mango, ah. no mango. <laughs> That's kind of funny because sometimes they're literally like that. I saw I saw one like while I was driving. I, anyways. Probably should do that. But uh, I saw one where some dude was like trying to do a jello shot. Yeah. And he like couldn't get it out of the thing. And when he got it out, he's like, <sighs> and he like choked on it. He choked. And then his wife was like, are you, are you all right? And he was like, yeah, but I'm about to go viral on TikTok. And then it went viral. <laughs> I've never seen the thing go viral for him being like, I'm going to go I'm viral. viral now. But actually, choking. the weird thing about TikTok is, is that I hate that I have to wa I want to watch it. And then when I start watching it, I'm freaking scrolling and scrolling and yeah. scrolling and scrolling and watching. And I keep watching. I was never, like, I don't know. I never got into that or fine. It's so. big now, man. And TikTok is so big. I think they have 900 million freaking users. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's growing so fast. It's on fire. You know what sucks is I keep telling myself, I was like, all right, the next trend, I'm going to do it. And I never yeah. do it. You have to do it. Like, <laughs> like that's the thing. If you keep... You know, in my opinion, it, I've been doing this damn show now 13 years. And, you know, I stopped for like eight years. I only did it once every four months. Mm -hmm. If I ever did this show full time like I've been doing it the past two years, it would be a different world. Yeah. And I screwed up. I remember when podcasts started. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, I could do one of these new things. I could do a podcast. And then now I, podcasts are like. Sure. Podcasts are, are becoming a normal thing for everybody. I, to I have. started a business like five years ago, Podcast Cafe, where I was telling, I would go around to businesses like, "Look, you need a podcast." They're like, "What do I need a podcast for? It's ridiculous." And I'm like, "No, I'll, I'll do an, I'll do episodes with you. I'll shoot them." And then, like, I just couldn't get people interested in podcasts. Yeah. They didn't understand and what a podcast like, was. Like, oh, we need one. Yeah, stupid. Yeah, now everybody what? needs a damn podcast. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I was talking about back then. <laughs> I was ahead of my. I was ahead of the curve. Head of the curve. Head of the curve. That means I made no money. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what ahead of the curve means, right? That's like when people say like shows were before their time. It's like, oh yeah, you mean they got canceled? It, it per <laughs> exactly. Freaks and Geeks was ahead of its time. Yeah, yeah they it was, canceled it. It was so ahead of its time that at the time nobody wanted to buy ads on it, and therefore <laughs> it didn't work. That's so what? So what's next? Now you're watching these comedy uh, dry bar comedy specials that you're dropping get a lot of heat. Yeah, they're getting hundreds of thousands of views. Yeah. Um, it's all new to you, right? Because this is just they're just coming out. Yeah, this is wild. Like they didn't tell me when they were coming out, and I was just like anticipating, like oh, I hope people like it. I hope people watch it. And then now I'm over like four hundred thousand total views in two wow. days. That's so awesome. It's wild. So it's like to think four hundred thousand people sat down, took the time to watch, even. 30 seconds of my jokes is like oh man I appreciate it. like because there's so many other things you can watch well there's so like just to put that in in perspective I bet True TV and the and you know some of these channels that people are well known don't get that kind of viewage in a, in a week in a week right? right that's wild that's amazing it's so crazy like how the internet's changed marketing like because people are just on Facebook scrolling and then they see a thing and they're like oh, I'll give it a shot watch and, it yep and they watch it and, and for them to share it like it has the first video they put on Facebook has over like 1500 shares wow that means not only do people watch it but That's they right. went I need other people to yeah. see this which and is that is insane. so hard to do like you have to understand that people's page they think that like every that person everything they have on there is, is, is gold mm -hmm. right so then they're gonna share your stuff that has to make you feel great it's crazy like people have reached out from like Australia and stuff and I'm like you all don't understand that like I've slept in bathtubs bro right, like right. I've I've been very broke and so for people to the like tumbling yeah, yeah it's crazy like I was on the drive down here last night it's like a two hour drive and as I was driving I just had the thought of like these people are so nice to me they have no idea like how much I need it like yep. not not need it but like love it and appreciate it and like just you, you just reach out and tell them, man. That, that's oh, the best thing it. you I've can do. I've been trying do. my best. Because I know this is, you know, this fame is going to come and keep continuing to grow for you. But just let them know because 
that's one thing that sometimes I think people don't get. When people tell me that, oh man, I loved your show today, it does make it's you huge. feel great. You're working to do yeah. this every day and putting it out for people to watch, to enjoy yeah. it. So when you get the feedback, I think it's really, it does feel good. It's amazing. You know, I'm such, I'm so hard on myself, like like comedy wise, because I love comedy so much that when I put something out, that's why I don't have like a lot of videos on YouTube is because I want it to be perfect. Yeah. And that's such, that's an impossible thing to do in comedy. It is. Because you is. always want something back. And so like, when they, when they put the videos out, I know exactly what I would change about every single video. So when people watch it, as soon as they pinpoint the same thing I would change, I just go, oh, I know. But you have to keep putting out more material. Like literally, right. the, the best thing you could do is just let people know about you. Like that's the new type of thought for comics. Like the old school, oh, I have to protect my joke so people don't see them. Right. That's so gone. That's so... 10, 12 years ago now, those people that decided that they were going to put that stuff in a vault and never show it until they buy their special is just, they're gone. Like, they're not relevant anymore. Right. You literally have to, like, fans have to see how you funny gotta you are. You got to put it out. Yeah, I have, oh, man, I have every set I've ever done, either audio or video recorded. Every single set. Actually, I'm missing two. I'm missing one because they told me my first set. I'm actually missing my first set ever. Hi, uh, Trisha. Hi, Tony. Hey, guys. What's happening? Thanks for watching the Captain's Log, guys. <laughs> Cam's on my show, and uh, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have every set that I've ever done except for two, which is honestly thousands of sets now. And when what do you I do, record them with your own phone or whatever? Yeah, I either have the voice memos on my phone or I have the like uh, camera set up to record it. And right. so uh, something I want to do is... The next special I put out, my first hour, I want to put out all of the first times I did those jokes that I yeah, dropped there. Yeah, that's great. And show the difference. Do it at the end, like yeah. for the bloopers, yeah. right? Exactly. So, like, whatever bit hit the hardest or whatever that people like the most, show how that bit developed. Totally. Yeah. People will love that. Yeah. It's and a then great idea. I also want to put... I think I'll produce it. <laughs> I also want to put my... The first video I have, which is my second set ever, I want to put that video on there too to go, this is how far I've come. Right. Like that video, I hate. It's Guys, terrible. if you like that idea, let us know. Tell us in the comments or whatever. Say hi. And uh, we're on the captain's log. By the way, if you like the show, you can always podcast anywhere. You get your podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever. We're on there. And um, we're having fun. We're back. <laughs> first show in December, man. I, I don't think I've... Uh, had this long of a while but it, it was with the holidays and then i got a little cold and then i had to go to orlando so it's been a, it's been a few days since i've been live but but thanks for watching guys yeah last week uh was jj here yes yeah that's your boy that's my man yeah, I he's love not the florida dude uh, he's uh georgia georgia but yeah. yeah he moved here uh maybe a year ago uh, just over a year now. I mean, yeah, he lives here, right, Tampa. Yeah. Dude, as soon as I saw him, I was like, "That's my guy." I was like, yeah, I went up to him, like he got off stage, and I ran over, and I was like, "Come here, come here, like, you're my friend now." <laughs> nice. that's, that's how comedy works. When you yeah. see somebody who's funny, that's you just right. go, "We're friends now." Yeah, like, because yeah. like, what about people, guys that aren't funny? They they hang out with the unfunny guys. I mean, you hang out with them, like you you know, you you're nice to people, <laughs> but like, so all it's hard that you you. Don't in comedy, guys, he thinks they're not funny. <laughs> no, no just, I, I talk to everybody. It <laughs> just, just you. you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you want to be better, so you gotta right. surround yourself with better people. Yep. So like, when when JJ and I are on shows together, we're like, I'm trying to beat you. I'm yep. trying to beat you. like, you don't want to be on shows with somebody. Not not that you don't want to be on the shows with them, but you wanna you wanna compete. I'm competitive, right. and somebody's on a show just doing like, I traffic's crazy, and you're just like, oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to bring it to the next level. I just saw a really great uh, podcast. My good friend, uh, Eric Schwartz, has a new podcast coming out. I know Eric. You know Eric. Yeah. So he had Joe Coy on, which if you know Eric, he opens for Joe Coy. And Joe yeah. Coy's selling out freaking arenas now across the world, right? Yeah. He's gigantic. Well, Joe is talking about how he opened for Cedric, the entertainer, in like a 5,000-seater sold out. Right. And he thought he blew the roof off the place. Cedric and went up and said, blew the yeah, roof off. Yeah, and then he's like, damn, I thought I just had like this killer set. Like Cedric ain't going to be able to freaking follow it. Dude. So then, so that's yeah, why that's Joe's true. like, this is how like these st superstars do it. And now he's got Eric. It's a crusher. And he, he opens for Joe Coy, but he headlines our club. He's great, you know. But um, so I think that raising the show 
the show to the next level. And we do that too. Like, yeah. for example, you're headlining tonight and then you're opening this week. That's going to be a tough show to follow, right? Yeah. You're going to bring some heat. You gotta oh, I'm bring, bringing heat. Yeah, because like, that's down. fun, man. Like, it's fun to work with people and yeah. to know that they're going to elevate too. Right. Dude, one of my favorite moments in my career thus far uh, Eric Myers is a murderer. He's murderer. A murderer. And, and every time he opens for somebody, they get so pissed dude, they can't follow him. Yeah. It's, uh, I was told two things. One, either somebody's booking Eric with you because they love you and they know that the show is just going to be filled with fire, or they hate you and they want to <laughs> bury you every show. And so I was milling for him, and I had one of those sets where I was just like, man, I, I hit hard. <laughs> and I was like, damn, this is crazy. So Eric like, gets on stage! Do, but like the, the exchange, that in-between point uh, of like when the feature gets to talk to the headliner while the host is bringing up the, right. the guy. So... I was like, man, you're gonna have fun. The crowd was great. I was like, they're having a lot of fun. Like, oh, he was like nervous. He was like, how am I gonna follow that? That was crazy. He Eric like, gets in his feelings, he gets, dude. He got in his every head, time. Right? And I was like, what? I was like, you're Eric Myers. He goes up first two minutes. It's kind of shaky. I was like, no way. I was like, did I just bury Eric? And then boom, he starts blowing the yeah, roof dude. off. And I was like, I was like, yeah, because he's a murderer. That's exactly every what's time. Happen. Every and time. One of my favorite comics all time. He's one of the smartest human beings I've yep, ever met. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and dumbest. And dumbest, yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I didn't realize how crazy addiction is until I went through it. Yeah. Like, and then you go, like, with the alcohol thing, man, you just, you see a different side of going, oh, it's hard to control. Uh, it does grab a hold of you, right? Yeah. I mean, you stay on top of it and, and be smart, be strong, and keep people in your circle, right? Right. It's, I mean, it's, what's so wild is like, I never saw myself being addicted to anything ever. And then as soon as I stopped drinking alcohol, I would pass by a bar and have the thought of like, damn, I kind of want to drink, which I never had before. I would always just have drinks like casually with people. And then it just got to a point where like, I guess I was doing it too regularly. So are you straight sober now or are you just controlling it? Wait, controlling which, it. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, Cause I, I took, I've taken a couple breaks now. Like I've took, from September 21st, I didn't drink until October 20th. Okay. And then, so I took a, a month. So I was sober for a month, and then I started drinking slowly, and then I took another week and two weeks off, and I've been just trying to figure it out, trying to figure sure. out what I drink, what I shouldn't drink, how much I should drink, yeah. you know. And you don't weigh all that much, so you can't be oh, drinking. Oh, no. That, that was the thing, though. Yeah. My body weight never came into it. I was a killer. Well, like, dude, that's what I'm saying. I was able to push. No, you were, you were drinking it, away. but your body was like, hey, uh, you only weigh 130 pounds, pal. You don't need to be consuming this much. I was putting it away, though, dude. I was burying people who were like 330 pounds. Yeah. Like, I was going, like, drink for drink with big dudes. And, and burying your bar liver. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest with the, you. Uh, no, the nurse, when she did all the tests and stuff, she was like, Look, there's a little something on your liver. But it's, she was like, it's not enough to worry about, but you do need to chill out. Right. With That's me going hard since I was 19. Wow. Like, yeah, you know I mean, it, it's not smart, but now I understand, like, that's not the move. Right, right. But like, you're and, just, you end up killing yourself. And that your career is, is such on the rise right now. You want to make sure you make the right decisions, you know. Right. And, and being around all of it all the time. Like I've had no problem turning down drugs my whole life just because I've I know I'm not Same good at here, it. Right. It's because like I, I've tried to smoke weed and like I'm just not good at it. Like I get paranoid. <laughs> I'm in my head all day. My my brain is always going. Really? Always going. My like it's hard for me to sleep because I can't turn my brain off. Like especially since starting comedy, it's just always that like, same thing. With I'm me. firing all day long. Same thing. Same um, thing. Like even when you I'm should not be posting talking, more than damn it. Oh man, I have so many things that I could be posting. Why are you not posting? I don't know. I just I need, I, to, I never, I need to manage you. <laughs> I just never just like never realized if people cared or not. And, like now I'm realizing like the more I post, the more people are like, yo, we love this, we need this. Like especially all the things with like the drinking and stuff. People are like, yo, like thank you for yeah. speaking up about this and that. Because I didn't know that people talk about that. I just didn't talk about it because I wasn't going through it. Right. And so now that I'm going through a lot of things, when I talk about it, people are like, thank you. And I'm like, and I've the always realness, been honest. The realness and honesty of, you know, your life and yeah. what's happening. People people that follow you respect that and they want to take the with you. So that, I think that's really good. It's wild. Like, people that I was kind of afraid that would see the post and, and feel some type of way about it, they reached out and they were like, yo, I love that you did that. And I was like, oh, I'm glad that you like that. Like, yeah. my grandpa and stuff. Like, right. even the... the guy who's getting me like a bunch of college gigs i was like man is he not gonna want to work me no more if if he sees this and he reached out he was like yo thank you like i've gone through my own things boom boom and 
which is really cool. That we other do people sober do. shows at the club too, where they're not. We don't even serve alcohol. Oh, and right. that we did our first one uh, last month, and it was a hit. That's a great. Concept. And we're doing it again. That's a great. People concept. loved it. Loved wow. it. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. All That's right, guys. Great. Well, we're going to wrap this up. We're in traffic. Normally, we'd be home by now, but we're chilling in traffic. We're in Estero, heading out, uh, heading into Benita right now. And uh, Cam Bertrand's my guest. I appreciate you coming on. Thank Thanks you so much. Me, I appreciate it. Catch him tonight at Off The Hook Comedy Club. He's headlining at 7 o'clock. Get tickets at offthehookcomedy.com. And then you can see him opening all week. We're going to have a great show. Uh, Anthony DeVito, he'll be on the show tomorrow with me live, talking about uh, what he's got coming up on the captain's log. And by the way, I didn't get on yesterday for uh, the Tuesday Giving Day. But I am going to make a post about any charities or nonprofits like we did last December. We raised a ton of money. I had you guys on, talked about what your organization is doing, what how people can help. Um, so DM me, let me know if you want uh, to be on the show with your organization or you know telling people about your charity that you're trying to raise money for for the holidays. Um, I'm here for you. Thanks, guys. Be good. We out.